Hey there, everyone. Welcome back to some more Let's Play Loop Hero. In the last episode, we started playing Loop Hero. We saw our hero begin his journey on a strange path surrounded by nothingness. And as he began to wander around, he fought a slime. And then suddenly we received some memories. And with these, he was able to recreate a forest and a mountain. And these provided him with some resources. He was able to use those resources to create a campfire and go out again. Upon returning to the campfire, after walking around this strange looping path several times, he found other people here at the camp. Talking with them, they have no memory of the people that they have lost, or that used to be with them and no longer are, or that are have yet to appear to them, given that there is luggage here without the people uh, the luggage was for. We have discovered that it's some sort of strange apocalyptic event has occurred and wiped out everything, leaving it with the nothing from uh, the never-ending story, effectively. And our hero, this warrior, is able to bring back uh, the simplest of things, sticks, rocks, twigs, pieces of metal, but these last, as opposed to other items here, which vanish as soon as people turn around or turn their backs on them. And these items, because they're, they last, are usable to help create. And as such, our hero has created a little bit of the town now. We've constructed a, the campfire, field kitchen, herbalist hut, a smithy, and the gymnasium. And we can see there's quite a few more buildings for us to create. We've unlocked the ability for us to go ahead and create a deck of cards and pick and choose what we want. And we've seen the vast majority of what we will see probably for the first act in the game. Let's go ahead and tweak our deck a little bit to swap out some cards and put in other ones, and then we'll try another loop. And so, I think in the spirit of the game, we're going to make a few choices here just randomly. Or rather, maybe not randomly, but I'm going to pick uh, some cards and drop others all together. We're going to leave the Vampire Mansion away to this time. We'll take the village. We haven't seen what that does yet. Uh, I think we'll drop the Chrono Crystal. Actually, let's, let's keep the Chrono Crystals. We'll take the Blood Grove. We have to drop another card. Let's drop the Beacon. And let's drop one more card. Uh, we're still early on. The treasuries are so useful. I guess we'll, I guess we'll go with, with, with this. So we're taking the village. We're dropping the vampire mansion. We're taking the blood grove. And we're dropping the beacon. Let's go ahead and give it a try. So as before, whenever we start a loop... Because we built the smithy, we start out with the warrior's gear. I got that equipped, and we slug it out with a handful of slimes that we find walking around or slithering or sliming around the path. We've got a regen ring. We have a grove. There's no reason for us not to place it. So, or there might be a good reason for us not to place it, but we're going to place it anyway. Let's put that grove here. We walk on it, and we immediately got ourselves a stable branch. All the, that is slightly better armor. Three more hit points, we'll take it. A mountain. So let's put that... Uh, let's try to aim for our mountain peak over on this side today. And I think we'll have some spiders out in that direction as well. Coming off the mountain as if they had some sort of lair in the cave systems there. Another sword. All these level 1 weapons, the minimum damage for them will be 1 through 3, assuming they're gray. I'm sorry, 3 through 5, or 4 through 6. A cemetery. Let's have humanity be around this side, so we'll put a cemetery there. Dig another stone. Slaughter another slime. Getting a rock. A mountain, and importantly, our first village, everyone. Let's go ahead and put that down. When we walked into the town, 
the game will choose a creature that either exists out here someplace, or sometimes it might just randomly spawn a creature that's able to be ejected from that, I think that thing, or maybe it, it creates a slime, and it will give us a quest to kill that creature. Upon killing that creature, there's a chance, I guess, for a decent reward from it itself, but you, when you walk back to the village that gave you the quest to kill that particular creature, you will gain a reward for doing so. Let's think. Probably should have the crystals coming off the mountaintop, too. Let's, uh... Let's put it there. We're gonna hope that we can handle so many spiders so quickly. And the increased amount of dogs we're gonna get. We're gonna get one... I'm gonna keep calling them rat hounds, so they're called wolf rats. Uh, rat wolves, I think. Oof. And we're gonna get one of these a day. It's gonna be tricky. Alright, we got a 7 magic damage ring. Let's put that on to greatly increase our damage because of the fact we don't have a level 2 weapon yet. The meadow... Uh, I guess it would make sense for us to put the meadow... Well, it would make a lot of sense for me to put it near the uh, crystal, so we'll do that. Oh my goodness, so... Quest creatures. Quest creatures are basically normal creatures, only they have an extra 200% hit points. Woo! Nice! Three Chrono Crystals and... i oh, sorry, two Chrono Crystals and two Meadows. Um, well, let's keep putting more crystals near the mountains as well, then. Pretend there's some sort of, like, a... Uh, Comet crashed down this area and littered the area with full of these strange crystals from it. Another spider cocoon. So I said we're putting all the, the eggs on this side. Let's keep doing that. So let's put more eggs here. And the battlefield. Uh, we'll put that battlefield at this location. It'll spawn the chest nice and early on. Oh, that's interesting. The spiders from the one spider cocoon decided to go in two separate directions. I did not realize they could do that. Alright, this armor we just found is slightly worse than armor we currently got, because it's less hit points, but it does have damage to all and some evasion, so we'll equip it. That magic damage we have will come in really handy against that single skeleton. And we gained a better weapon, a rapier. All rapiers are vampire, uh, have vampirism on them. So we'll put that on to give us some life leech now. And they gave us... A small ration for completing the quest, and they also gave us a level 2 mace. A decent, it does 2 magic damage, 4 damage to all, that's actually pretty nice. But I like my repair better, and we need some ability to heal our life, because we got we don't have any at the moment except for this repair. So we're going to keep that. We healed up the full upon reaching the, uh, the cozy camp. Let's proceed on. Look at all those horrible monsters on that side. A better shield. We immediately equip it. Give us some regen per second, some more evasion, and some defense. Die, rat wolf. Quite a bit more defense on these, but I think I want my evasion and regen per second on our current magic shield. You'll note, by the way, the spiders, when they're attacking us, Note that they're not biting us, or using their... Uh, they're not using their mandibles, they're not spinning webs. Something breaks out of their abdomen. And, or there's... Uh, yeah, I, think, I think that's the right term for it. And attacks us from it. Quite creepy. We got four more of them to fight now, too. It's a bit awkward, because we're not quite killing... Well, we are... Because with the warrior, we are inflicting more damage to these creatures every single sec- uh, every, like, second that's elapsing. And we leveled. Blissful Ignorance, Somersault, 35% chance to perform a counterattack during an evade. So, why don't we try to use this, and we'll grab some more evade whenever we get it. We got another Chrono Crystal and two more meadows. We also have another treasury. Let's put the treasury over here. We'll litter this crystal this crystal with more meadows. And we'll put this crystal... Let's look. What's my magic damage? Seven. We'll aim for vampirism 
magic damage and evasion on items when I can. And I'll risk... Uh, no, I won't. Let's put this crystal over here instead. I don't know if... Until I have a... Until I... Until I'm not so worried about my life, uh, I'm going to not put crystals near the, uh, the graveyard. Yeah, we're gonna flood that area filled with monsters. Die, skeleton. Ooh! 11 defense. We lose that regen per second. We lose the evasion I said I, w I wanted. We gain 2 damage to all, 2 more defense, so it's 13 defense and total attack speed. I really think we should keep the evasion. So we will do that, even though this is a very nice shield. Alright, we got a new quest to kill a spider over here. We got probably got another ration or something from that one town as well. Bash the chest a bit. Same magic damage, 8% counter. 2 defense, 10% counter. We lose the magic damage, we gain region per second. We're going to keep the magic damage. I said we, we aim for magic damage, evasion, and... Something else I can't... Oh, vampirism. Hey, our first blood grove, everyone! So, note something special about the blood grove. We can only place it in two spots. This is because the blood grove must be placed adjacent to a grove or a forest. If we put this forest over here somewhere, uh, let's see, let's put it, let's uh, put it here. We could then put the blood grove here as if we wanted to instead. Let's put the blood grove in this area. A living forest. Praise on wounded occupants of adjacent tiles may spawn something dreadful from their remains. Can be placed near a forest adjacent to the road. Its roots devour enemies that have less than 15% hit points left. What that means is that you're going to see this do, do some pretty nasty things to the enemies. Once the enemy has, yep, that much life. Actually, this is perfect. It gives me a chance to, so notice what's happening to the rat wolves and notice what happens to the spiders. It devours creatures, uh, in particular enemies that have souls, not just any enemy. I, I think that's correct. And as such, spiders are soulless insects. Rat wolves, though, have souls and will be eaten. It's, it's very important to know, actually, that's, that's what's happening. Uh, we gain a ton of vampirism here, 13%, but we lose that magic damage. A very nice weapon. This is very tempting to equip, but I'm going to hold off on that at the moment. It'd be neat to actually use both of these items. You know what, actually? I think we're going to do that. We get another with even more vampirism. Let's equip the vampirism ring. So we're going to lose that magic damage, but we'll equip this level 5 axe. And our damage will skyrocket. Yep, 12 to 22 through 34. That's a really great for, uh, for this moment. Uh, we'll put another graveyard there. To my knowledge, I think the roots will still attempt to eat these creatures 15% left. Like, it kills them, but it doesn't actually devour them, again, if they do not have souls. Oh, and now we're too far away, so uh, the effect isn't happening here. Got another quest spider. That's good, so when we're hitting the spiders for as much damage as they hit us for. Um... Oh, I really want to fight lots of ghosts. I think I think it would make sense to put a battlefield near some graveyards. Yes, let's let's put it here. Woo! Just barely didn't use a potion there. And we get a goblin camp spawning. What's our vampirism at? 16? Okay. 
more meadows. We definitely want these in play. Let's put one of those there. I guess we can take advantage of the fact there is a goblin camp here. And we'll put the meadow for the goblin camp, uh, put one right behind it. And why not? Let's go ahead and build the mountain peak. So we have 195, 199 max hit points at the moment. Alright, so we picked up an extra 30 hit points basically for doing that and a bunch of noticeable changes. An Oblivion. That's tempting to use on the Goblin Camp. But we'll see... We'll see if we need it. Let's get, let's go around one more time. We might be able to take on the goblins. Goblins are a good source of some possibly decent treasure. More magic damage. But I lose all my vampirism, so no. I'm gonna hold on to our vampirism ring at the moment. All right, the quest reward from the town was this shield. I don't want to give up my evasion. So I think we keep everything we've currently got. It's been close, but we haven't had to drink one of those potions yet. We'll take a look at that gear. Oh, you know what? We're still using our level 1 armor. No wonder why it's been so rough for us. This armor is arguably better. We lose the evasion we had, though, but we're going to pick up counter and region per second. So we will do that. And we do, wow, much less damage with this weapon. But we gain 2 magic damage, so this is 13 through 19 damage. We also gain 5 defense. But I'm not going to be... Uh, 5 defense is nice to him, especially... Could... Let's, let's try it. Oh, wow. Our max damage now is our min damage from our previous weapon. Let's see how big of a mistake that was. Well, we're kind of still mostly equally the damage that the enemies are doing. We also got an even better level uh, to arguably damaged weapon with this normal sword now. But I'll keep our pole arm equipped for just a little bit longer to get a better feel for it. We did also get another blood grove, but I don't think I need to spawn it anywhere at the moment. Let's hold on to that blood grove. I'm watching this this bird fly there. We'll still hold on to it. I might deploy it there to help us with the harpy. Slimes have no souls either, and thus will not be eaten. Right, this also is telling us that, by the way, if our hit points were reduced to only 15% or left, the Blood Grove would try to eat us. However, it won't be able to automatically kill us. It will instead entangle us. What that means is that our when we attack, that attack will be consumed and to break the thing that's entangling us. Put another treasury out here near the mountains. Okay, let's keep going. Rat hounds. These things have a lot more life than I would like them to have. Or rather, I don't, I'm sorry, I'm not doing as much damage as I would like to be dealing to them. We've almost leveled up again, though. Another Oblivion. Very useful. And we're getting some Road Lanterns. We also got super lucky. We have an Orb of Expansion. We must have done a battle where we've fought at least five creatures somewhere here. I think we'll use some Road Lanterns to help us against all these spiders that are spawning. We have another village. So let's put that kind of before the goblin so it will heal us after we get done with this little passageway. Oh, that's weird. What was that? It spawned something new here. A bandit camp. Masters of trading their poverty for someone else's life. Spawns a bandit on the distant tile every two days. Bandits prefer villages. Appears for every two village tiles. 
Interesting. We've also got another cemetery. I think it would make sense for us to keep deploying those around here. Arguably, I shouldn't be d dropping down more cemeteries because we don't have much magic damage, but we'll do it. We do have 2.4 regen per second now. Why do we have so much of it? Oh, our shield gave us some of that. Another spider cocoon. We will, of course, put it near the other spider cocoons. Okay. Both of these are vampirism armors. So we gain some small amount of hit points. We lose counter. We gain damage to all, and we pick up 6% vampirism. Or we gain 16% vampirism for this armor. Let's go with this one instead. Remember again, everyone, that gray items... Uh, are common items, but like a weapon will deal the most damage. A suit of armor will have the most hit points. Blue armors will have less than the grays, but they'll have a guaranteed second st uh, stat of some sort they're affecting, and that stat is always the same for that it for that uh, image. This I think is giving us our counter. This is giving us the invade the evade. A ring that looks like this will always have vampirism on it. This ring, I think, is all, is the magic damage ring. This is this is an evasion ring, for example. So in this case, these are giving us the guaranteed vampirism. The yellow yellow stuff or yellow rarity has three total stats that they affect, and orange has four. But of course, the problem with this is that the four stats this affects are all slightly weaker than if it was only three stats, which is slightly weaker than if it was two stats, which is slightly weaker than if it was one stat. Now, I should, with all that vampirism, I probably should put on our sword. Let's see how much, let's see how well this works with the next uh, fight we do, though. Okay, they're doing seven damage, we're healing seven hit points. And we leveled again! Article of Protection and Battling Ram. We've seen both of these before. Since we have lots of enemies present here, let's take Battering Ram. We're fighting large groups of enemies, and Battling Ram sounds like it will be helpful against dealing with them. So that was Battling Ram. Whenever we begin the battle, the first swing we do, we'll have a 75% chance to do exactly that. And what that does is it stuns that enemy for one second. We have another road lantern. Let's keep putting them, you know, right down this line. Looks very pretty, doesn't it? That also will reduce the number of goblins we'll have to fight. We get healed a little bit. It spawned a boss slime for us. Or rather, it gave that, that slime boss status. Let's see how we do against the goblins. Okay, I don't think I like the goblins. Although we did get a decent shield from the leader. A great deal more defense. Wow, 11 more defense and 5 more evasion. We'll equip it. I think, though, I didn't like that fight very much. We're going to get rid of that. Hi, right, slime. Another meadow. Oh, sure. We have these um, lanterns here. We can get, have them become blooming meadows by putting them close to those. Die, big slime! And you can become a ghost! You can become a ghost. You know, I said the... Uh, the Blood Grove eats things with souls. It might actually not be things... Well, it might be living. I thought, uh, I thought these were living, though. I still have not made up my mind if I want to equip this sword or not. Which is why you keep seeing me shift it. Let's see how long it takes us to kill this skeleton. Too long. Ooh! Okay, not quite as much damage as our current sword, but more damage than our polearm. We lose all the magic damage we had we have acquired, but we gain some regen per second. So let's equip this. 
We also lose five defense, so we'll take more damage now from these enemies. But our vampirism has gone up quite substantially. Another goblin camp. So we don't like the goblin camps. We're going to get rid of this one as well. Nice. We stun the chest. Take it. Hey, another vampirism ring. So this one has less vampirism than we currently have, but we gain two defense and two magic damage. I'm willing to equip that. That's right. Slime gets stunned. I'm still not sure about this sword. I think a current sword is, is... I think I'm willing to have this slight damage reduction for the regen. I prefer my current armor. I don't want to lose all that vampirism. Daggers! This will have evasion on it. So, much less damage. We gain defense, evasion, and vampirism. I did say I wanted vampirism and evasion. Am I willing to drop down that much damage, though, for this? No, fair. I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, those said you said the right words. Um, no. Very rarely do I decide to go down, drop in damage. I don't think I'm going to do so. Hey, I don't remember you. You don't look like a local. That's because I'm not. I see. And you think you can just wander these parts without consequences? Times are rough, you know. Nothing to bite. Nothing the wet ones whistle. And we have to deal with strangers who have no sympathy for our poverty. What? You think you're better than us? No. Did I guess right? Is this a correct answer? Because I'm getting the impression this is one of those cases where my answer has zero influence on what happens next. Well, you've got insight. And it's the only thing you will keep today. Bandits! Dodgy. They're very similar to the uh, rat hounds. Come to think of it, murders and thieves are part of this world too. If my mission is to return everything back to normal, should I be happy they're appearing again? On the other hand, being disgusted with murder and theft is also a part of this world. So I guess I don't owe it to anyone to be happy. I think we could do another loop. We still have not had to drink any potions. And we still got, looks, looks like, one-third left until we can spawn the boss. Now, I don't think we'll be able to take on the boss with the build I'm currently going on. I, I don't have a good feeling about it. We'll see. As we continue to adventure. I'm so sorry about your children, Harpy! So this is this must be the damage to all armor, is what that looks like. I guess it makes sense because of the spikes we see on it. This is quite the number of enemies right here. Did you realize we had three rat hounds and the harpy all in one single spot? Ooh, that's a lot of region per second on that ring. I'm not willing to swap any of this equipment for what I currently got though. So, I think another road lantern will be handy. Let's put it down here to help us get rid of some of these spiders. Oh, we, we found the quest though, okay. So, if you get rid of the quest creature through a means that wasn't you fighting it, you will fail the quest. View it this way. They told us this a spider would be there that we needed to kill. However, it wasn't killed. Instead, it vanished from existence. The people in the town don't even realize this creature ever existed in the first place, and thus no quest was given for us to kill it. I kind of like that in a way. Reminds me of, what was it called? The Dark Crystal. How when... The Skeksi was killed. The mystic that it was associated with also died. 
the decisions you make in this game do have uh, other consequences. Sometimes something might help you, like placing the mountains down, but it also hurts us a bit. Well, these are living, but the Blood Grove doesn't like spiders, so it's not eating them. I have two cemeteries, but considering I only have two magic damage and how much damage the skeletons are doing to us, I am very hesitant to put down another... Uh, another cemetery. Nice! Take it! Get stunned! Even more cemeteries, and even more spiders. It looks like, though, we can handle the spiders without any issue. Hey, what the heck's happening here? The Blood Grove is doing something crazy. Another Blood Grove. Let's, uh, let's put the Blood Grove there. We have fed the Blood Grove enough that there's something dreadful is coming out of it. Got another spider cocoon. Let's put you there. A meadow. What is that? Look at that creature. Some sort of giant monstrosity down there now. Thankfully all by itself. It looks like we'll be able to handle going around again. So we'll, we'll get a good look at it. Another Blood Grove. Alright, let's put you... There. Yeah, it looks like we don't need to... I don't... I don't really feel like I need to equip this sword. Our current weapon, combined with all the vampirism that we have, is doing enough that we shouldn't need it. Another Blood Grove! Alright, let's put this one here. I want a meadow back there. I think that would make sense. Or we could have another mountain range on this side. This could be like an area between two valleys. Let's do that. We have more groves. I guess I could now put a blood grove here too. Sure. Now also, yep, convert that blooming that meadow to a blooming meadow. Put another grove down as well. And now, if we do decide to fight the Lich, we have made it such that the, when the Lich spawns, none of those Lich's palaces will appear around here. We got another sword, less damage, more regen per second, and some damage to all. I lose two damage. But I think that gets made up for by the damage to all, so we will we will equip that. Twelve evasions, very nice. But I'm not willing to lose that that vampirism yet. Ooh, uh, all right, this armor's better. Ca counter and vampirism. We lose a little bit of vampirism, but we gain max life and we gain ten percent counter. We'll take it. We saw gargoyles, I think, in the last video as well. Good amount of defense on these creatures. Level 7 dirt, 26 to 38 damage. That's pretty amazing. Our current weapon, though, I think is doing 23 through 33. So that's not too much better than this. And we, get, we keep our regen per second, so we'll keep what we currently have. Um, we've got another chrono crystals. I think we're going to wait a little bit to deploy anything else. Actually, let's deploy the Blood Grove here to help us eat these skeletons, because it will try to grab them when their life is a little lower. And I think we'll put another Blood Grove here. Now, I'm being pretty uh, free with the blood groves I'm putting that at the moment. We'll see if this is a good decision or not.
Nice. Don't get stunned. Ooh, two skeletons are gonna be tough. Yeah, oh, okay, yep, so it is eating them. So it wants things that have souls. A level 8 sword. This is hard not to equip this. This is more minimum damage than we do maximum. We do lose legion per second, but our vampirism would really benefit from that. I think we equip it. It's just too good. It's just too good. My plan will be to go around one more loop to see what that one creature is. Uh, but I'll... I'm, well, I guess I have a little bit... I want to not... I'm a little worried about that deploying too many of my tiles, which is very always tempting to do. We will end up spawning the boss before I reach a, before I reach a campfire. But uh, I think we'll be okay. Let's spawn this... Uh, we'll put that city... Uh, sorry, that village there. Oh, it's interesting. We missed the chest with that uh, that one attack. I am perfectly fine with that. Take it, chest. And prism evasion ring. What I've got is better. Three more defense or 10% counter with even more hit points. I think this armor is actually better than what I currently got. We'll wear that one. Okay. Uh, I don't want to lose, so we're... I think we're almost maxed out on cards we're allowed to keep. Cards will begin being discarded, similar to how our items will be discarded. Uh, we get a new item up here, a new resource that we'll begin to acquire when we do that, but I really don't want to lose the Oblivion. But there's nothing present I'm worried about at the moment. Let's deploy another mountain. I can probably deploy a Chrono Crystal. And a Meadow. Vampirism shield. Darn it, but I don't want to lose the evasion. If I do plan on fighting the boss, which I don't think we're going to do, I'm going to want my evasion much higher when we fight it. Vampirism isn't going to help me very much when we fight this boss. I, But maybe it would be more thematic for us to die to the boss than for us to actually defeat it. Okay, uh, we're going to go around again, and we're going to pause the game first. So let's begin deploying things, because we're going to spawn the boss right now. Okay, let's begin getting meadows down. We'll get rid of that... God, ah, do, do I care about the goblin camp? It's going to spawn arguably two goblins when I reach there. No, I won't get rid of it. I will put some cemeteries down, since we'll be passing through there. We might as well get the free stones. Ooh, a boss harpy! I did not realize that that was the boss for this area. Okay, we won. Let's get a village further up. We get another bandit camp. Let's deploy this here near the other treasuries. A series of them built a long time ago by some wizards or mages, probably. Um, keep 
going, Tim. Thirty-two percent attack speed ring. That's very nice, actually. And that's very helpful against the final boss. 20 magic damage! Wow! We're getting some really good stuff. I guess, well... I don't really want to ruin the boss for us. Not the first time. Even though the game has just given me some things that I could really use to really help me defeat it. Uh, I think it'd be best for us to fight him... I think if I'm going to fight him, I stick with my plan to have vampirism and evasion. Yeah, stick with the plan, Tim. We can make the call on fighting the boss when you reach him. We are healing for more than... The creatures are damaging us for. Another oh, another oblivion. Very nice. Okay. So let's make this return trip a little easier. And let's oblivion the goblin camp after all. We'll put another village there, getting rid of whatever monster that was. I think it was a harpy. Let's have more healing. Stick with the plan, Tim. You said evasion. Stick with evasion. I really like the boss music, by the way. Their themes are pretty incredible. Hey! Uh, two magic damage. We lose two defense. We pick up 8% counter. And our vampirism remains the same. So really, this is just... Do I want two defense or eight counter? I think I'd honestly rather have... Oh... I'd rather have the defense, so our level 5 ring is better than the level 7 ring. We also leveled again. Let's get second thoughts. Let's grab the Article of Protection. After receiving this effect, and every and after every loop, the hero receives a bar of Phantom Protection that equals 65% of his max hit points. All damage is dealt to it, ignoring any defense. The boss will have to damage that before he can damage us. That will be really handy when we fight him. This also means I'm now super interested and making sure that I have as much max hit points when we get that shield renewed when we reach this location. Ooh! Seven magic damage and eight defense ring. That's very nice, though we lose our vampirism. Uh, we'll s just shift that over. Holy crap! What is this? A flesh golem. Plant, living, has a soul. Deals 79 damage, has 96 potential damage. Good god! So that is what gets spawned from the blood groves. Blood golems. Or, I'm sorry, uh, flesh golems. Monstrous, horrific, well, creatures. They do incredible amounts of damage and have some very powerful passes later on that makes them terrifying. But, killing them gives you good loot. Let's look. We lose 5% Vampirism, we pick up 8% Evasion, we gain Regen per second, and we gain more max hit points. We lose 3 defense. I think we will equip that armor. And this weapon, we lose some damage, but we regain damage to all, which I think makes up for it. We gain counter, and we gain Regen per second, so I think we, were, we use this as well. We have another rock. We want to deploy all the rocks now. We want more meadows deployed. We are probably not... If we fight the boss, we'll be retreating after that fight as well. So I don't intend to go around this again. When you defeat the boss, if you are successful, you can indeed keep going around the loop over and over and over again. Even getting more and more resources. But I would like to double back after killing the boss this time, if we are able to kill him. I'm actually... I have a decent feeling about it. If I'm being honest, I think we might be able to do so. And if I'm wrong, well, we made the attempt. Let's see. Let's get the number of creatures here down. Oh, 
I'll have a, a good feeling for it when we fight the skeletons again that are coming up. Especially if we're fighting two skeletons. That'll give me a good feeling for how, how we'll do against the boss. Where am I? Alright, let's put you here. Yep, must, get, must get that free stable stone or preserved rock. Another blood grove. Uh, let's think here. Sure, we'll deploy it. Right at the very end, if I don't intend to circle around the loop again, you'll see me try to put every single tile I get out on the map. There's no reason to do this, and you should not do it. You should hold on to those cards instead, because uh, you will want the special resource that they turn into, which we have not gotten any of yet. But um, I like making the map look as finished as I possibly can when I am finished with the loop. Another village. Um... Let's think. I'm gonna do something a little weird. Oh! I was tempted to purge this spot of those rogues. And then drop a new village there. In fact, you know what? I'm going to do that. We want to have the least amount of fights right before the final boss. And I may be using our last Oblivion on this graveyard to make sure we're not fighting that skeleton. Even more resources. Wonderful. We get another ring. This ring, we lose more vampirism, but we gain evasion and attack speed and damage to all. We lose two magic damage and a mace. Our damage drops significantly. We gain damage to all, which we have already had some of. We gain, we lose our regen, we lose some attack, we gain some attack speed. I think I'd rather have my current weapon. But I do think we'll equip this. So we're down to only 16% vampirism now. As you can see, uh, the more loops you go through, the more stuff is happening during your loops. And the longer it takes you, uh, the, uh, the amount of days it takes, to get through that loop. People have had a great deal of fun trying to come up with infinite loops during their runs. And I think, I think there's a few videos up here on YouTube where people have managed to go through the game with like a hundred loops. Lots of spider cocoons around this path today. I guess they maybe they came from the comet that were that crashed here. And the town had set up around this path, and we're able to successfully uh, keep them at bay. Yeah, we're not we're not doing bad. That little bit of regen per second, the vampirism, even though it got dropped, with well, how much we heal, we're still making it. That's that's more than acceptable. Now it's tempting to drop all these around these treasuries and try for some last minute resources if I'm throwing the towel. But if I'm gonna fight the boss and I think we're gonna give it a try, then I'm gonna want even more max hit points so our shield is even higher when we reach him. And that means deploying rocks near other rocks. As you fight the boss, the day is progressing, by the way. Which means that you you could get a hit point per day recovery during that fight. See, we lose defense, we lose some evasion, we gain a little bit of magic damage, and we gain more vampirism. Am I willing to drop two defense and three evasion? I will.
This is a good test right here. Uh, I'm not going to drop Evasion at this point, so I will not be equipping those. We gain Defense, we gain 7% Attack Speed, but we lose Evasion and Vampirism for Counter. No, we don't want that. Yeah, so the crystals, I suppose, when they landed around this path, they corrupted the forests that were close by to it. Yeah, I like this. It's kind of uh, it's kind of fun for me to think of uh, reasons why things are the way they are. Woo! Just barely missed that flesh gum. That's both good and bad. It's good because we don't have to worry about taking a bunch of damage right before the end here. It's bad though. Because, unfortunately, that also means we, uh, we don't get a chance to get more treasure. But judging from how much- judging from how much- how tough this fight is, the final boss looks like it's gonna be- gonna be tough. This sword does two more min and four more max damage, but we lose a little bit of regen per second. I think we will keep our current spear. Okay, we have more rocks. We'll fill up this little area with them. I guess we will have a little meadow up here. At the end of this fight, I'll need to see, or I'll have a, a good feeling for if I need to oblivion the next fight. Getting a little bit more treasure before the final boss would be to totally worth it. I would prefer my 4% attack speed to 2 more defense. Yep, we'll stick, we'll stick it out. Nice! Destroyed the golem right away! Okay, this is it. We're not really gonna get anything worthwhile from that, uh... This bandit, unless I'm badly mistaken, so I should make up my mind here what we're doing. So I think we keep our spear. We just got a decent shield that has 20 defense, 9 magic damage, but we lose 9% evasion and vampirism for some regen per second. I'm not willing to do that. We gain some defense. We gain some 2 more magic damage. We lose 9%. Nope, I'm not willing to do it. All right. We're doing the last battle with this. And we get one more village. There's no... Oh, uh, actually, just the last place we can put it. We can put you there. All right! Whew. Let's try it. How? How is this even possible? That's right! You didn't devour me like the rest of the world! Haven't I? Do you really don't think so? What are you talking about? I'm standing right in front of you. I consumed all of your reality. Every one of its elements now rests in a separate pocket dimension. Spaces, living beings, information, even memories. They shall remain there until entropy does its work, turning everything into a uniform, static mass. Along with you, of course. You're insane. So what do we have here? I see. You found a way to interact with other pieces of your reality. To organize, combine, and merge them. But how? I don't see any exceptional talent or knowledge in you. You hardly even understand what is happening, right? I'll tell you what's happening. A pile of bones is butchering my world and thinks it can get away with it. You're already doomed and you know it. Perhaps you are just the first in a series of systematic errors. A problem I must learn to solve. Let's not waste any more time then. I don't think you're capable of feeling regret, but I'm about to change that. The boss! Cosmic Undead Mage has a soul. So... His damage is all magic damage, so your defense does nothing for you. He does full damage to you whenever he hits you. He has a decent amount of armor on him as well, so magic damage can be really handy. 
Unfortunately for him, he has to choose through he has to choose through that magic shield we have before he'll actually be able to hurt us. And it looks like we are in fact going to slaughter him. We got a really nice upgrade where we took that, and we made sure we had lots of hit points with all the mountains. Nonsense. This is impossible for so many reasons. I don't understand. Now put everything back like it was before. I can't. I've already completed my task, even if the result is not perfect. You are in no position to refuse, you sack of bones. He's already received everything I could gather. I just wanted to see how our crusade against the universe would end, to witness what would become of it. My presence is no longer required. Who is he? I get it. You're connected somehow, right? That's why. You will find out soon enough. This anomaly will not escape his attention. Now my explanations would be meaningless to you. So spare me your wheezing and just die. That sack of bones was telling the truth. I have a long journey ahead. I will build my whole world from scratch if I have to. And the skull of that monster will be the first brick in its foundation. Alright everyone! Holy crap, we did it! We defeated the first boss! I didn't, I didn't have a good feeling at it at first. This build was quite a bit different than the builds I normally go for when I, when I opt to go in and kill them, but we won! Awesome! And so, we now get to choose from amongst these rewards. Now, I've seen people say that these are new perks you get unlocked, similar to the ones you have when you have leveled, but I don't think that's how these work. I think these are permanent upgrades that either affect you, or like a... How does describe it? I... I think when, if we were to choose Deep Pockets, this would be a level up reward that would show up in the future for us, as opposed to being something we gain only for the remainder of this loop. As such, I don't really like Deep Pockets, and I don't really like Awakened Fragment, so I don't care about those upgrades. Axis Tilt could be useful, as could the Resource Assortment. This will give us these amount of resources to take back with us, in addition to what we already have. But one wood, four stone, three steel, two food, and three whatever this is. We haven't gotten any of this yet, but these books, they're not the most difficult things to acquire. So let's go ahead and unlock Access Tilt. The boss has been defeated, but your journey doesn't have to end. You can retreat to the camp with all your findings, but remember... The world will forget all your deeds. It always forgets. So, I think we've got a decent amount of resources. We've got the 10 steel we are allowed to get. We won't be allowed to take any more stable metal. Uh, metal. So I think we grab this and head back home. And we'll do another Act 1 mission. Let's go ahead and retreat. Everybody, listen! The Lich is dead! The curse has been lifted but, what lich? And what curse? I, I believe you, of course, but I have no idea what you're talking about. You don't remember the dead sorcerer? The one in the fur coat holding a scepter, all shrouded in star nebulas, uh, floating above the world on his shining wings, and eating it piece by piece. That's strange. Everything looks the same around here. Why? I guess he's not the only reason for this darkness, then. Hmm. The skeleton mentioned to him. Whoever he is, he must have something to do with the obliteration of the world. It seems I have no other option but to continue my expeditions. Alright, everyone. Well, let's see what we can do. So first off, let's check our statistics again. Eh, not bad! I can't... We beat him on the fourth expedition! I think that's the earliest amount of time that I've beaten him. In. At least the number of expeditions I've, I've attempted. And we have enough resources now that we could build a cemetery, the refuge, or a farm. Let me look at my map. Where am I building these? Okay, so 
Why don't we build the refuge? In these dire times, it's your duty to offer help to the needy. Can only be built next to a field kitchen. Unlocks a new class, the rogue. This is the only spot we could build it. If I wanted to build it here, I would have to destroy the, gymna the gymnasium first. If I wanted to build it here, I'd have to destroy the herbalist hut. I don't want to destroy either of them. I'm just, well, I'm starting out my map to make absolutely sure this is where I want it, and I think it is. There is exile, even in exile, hero. Don't be too hard on the lost souls who have found their salvation in wine and gambling. Sit down instead, and pick yourself up a poison to drink. That's not why I'm here. It's so strange. This place and its surroundings, they're familiar to me. Now we're talking. So do you make your living off the road? A bit of robbery, maybe? Or collecting bounties for someone's unlucky head? <laughs> it's as if someone else knew and did all this. And now I have their knowledge and skills. And now I somehow literally have two aces up my sleeve. And I think I stole someone's purse, too. Ha! Wait, that's my coin purse! You don't believe me? I don't know. Feel free to come by if you want to discuss your new trade. I didn't become this good with knives by working in the kitchen, you know. Unlocks the rogue. Okay, can we build anything else? Nope, we need more resources to build any of the other items. Okay, well, let's go ahead and head out and do another expedition. And now that we've beaten the first boss, the first boss is present in all of his glory. We can see what he is. However, we see there's something new up here. The Act 2 boss. Enemies have 1 through 2 abilities. They start with 0 strength as opposed to negative 5. So they're starting at effectively the 3rd th uh, loop around for Chapter 1. They grow stronger faster, but you gain more resources faster. And you're allowed to bring back more resources. Now, I'm not going to do Chapter 2 until we have beaten the Chapter 1 boss two more times. And then we will begin to proceed to Chapter 2. At that point, we should have enough resources to be able to allow us to beat the Chapter 2 boss. I hope. I think we will try the new class. And I think we'll also try it with the exact same deck that we just took out. Let's go ahead and get started. Oh, I guess we should read about this first. Can receive trophies after killing enemies in battle in exchange for them and exchange them for equipment in the camp. Has 5% vampirism from the start. 10% bonus for any effect for every equipped item with the same effect. Now, there's something important I need to point out here as well. First off, we're starting with the warrior's gear because we our forge has not been upgraded yet. Notice that what we click on here is a little different. This is because when we pick up equipment for our warrior, this is showing what types of equipment, or what their stats are, which will be slightly different than it is for the for the um, the rogue here. He gains evade, crit damage, and crit chance, as opposed to regeneration, vampirism. Oh, as opposed to uh, va vampirism and regeneration. So this means the rogue isn't going to heal himself beyond that initial 5% vampirism from the start. So, meadows might be helpful for the rogue if you're worried about taking damage. Because, well, they'll heal you at the start of each day. I could go on and on about different strategies, but let's go ahead and just start, and we'll see what plays how this plays out for the rogue. I already can tell you that this is not the deck I would bring with the rogue. There's several things in here that I would not want to see uh, if I was playing him. But, I think it will be good for us to see that together. Let's go ahead and get started. Right away, note again that the, the rogue has different uh, has a different equipment loadout than the warrior. He has two weapon slots, an armor slot and a boot slot. So we can make use of the armor, and we can make use of the sword, but we can't equip the shield. It won't let us do so. So this item will just be scrapped for a single piece of stable metal later on. He also looks different than a warrior does. Pretty cool looking. 
We just killed a creature, and something flew into this sack. Every time we kill a creature, we will earn a trophy from that creature. Now, there isn't much information about trophies for everything I've read, and I can't tell if it matters about the type of trophies you put in your sack. It might not. There may be no difference between putting a trophy from a slime in there compared to the trophy of a vampire, but there might be a big difference. But unfortunately, I can't tell. <laughs> so, if you know, maybe you can tell me in the comments below. I'm gonna go with it matters at this point, but I'm not sure that's a accurate statement to make. I really like that double swing from uh, from the rogue. That looks pretty pretty nice. So, when I've played the rogue in the past, the rogue has been all about dealing damage. I want to deal as much damage as possible. If I can one-hit every enemy I'm spring off against, that's fantastic. I'm doing it right. If I can't, I need to consider the what I'm currently have equipped, because I really want as much damage as possible. Um, let's put the... We'll put the Grove here, and we'll put an early on Blood Grove. Die, monsters! Okay, so... We have another Grove. Sure, why not? We'll begin stacking the area right before the camp. And we'll put a, a Lantern nearby as well. To reduce the number of Rat Hounds we'll have to worry about. That'll be our starting mountain. All right, all the loot that we had in our sack is turned in at this point to give us new items. Boots. All the boots in this game give you evasion. Every single one of them. There's no difference. They all give you evasion. And then, just like all the rest of the equipment, so it's like, you know, like your, like your weapons give you damage, your armor gives you hit points, boots give you evasion. And then, just like every other item, their look determines anything else special that they give you. These boots, whenever we see these heavy-looking boots with these gargoyle grins on their, uh... Hmm. Top part. That's the official name for it now. Uh, give you crit damage. Down here, you can see, by the way, that we have a 10% chance, whenever we hit an enemy, to crit them. And we'll deal 140% of the damage we normally would have done. Let's go ahead and put these boots on. Next, what other weapon do we want? So, why don't we go ahead and put on this level 3 axe, rather than our level 1 sword. And now, for this slot, we can equip a level 2 axe, or maybe we want instead, maybe a different weapon for some damage to all. I think, in this instance, since this does practically twice as much damage as this mace, let's equip this axe. And now we're doing 23 through 35 damage, which is... I think that's almost as much damage as our warrior had been doing at the end of the last battle when we squared off against the the Lich. Now keep in mind that the Rogue does not gain that extra 2% damage per, uh, per second that is elapsing during the fights. Also note his graphic here, he's got two swords in his hand. The warrior totally had a sword and a shield in his hand when he was walking around here. Where do I want this to go? Let's wait to deploy that. I want to see if we get, when we get goblins, where the goblin camp is going. And might as well begin killing the rat hounds. You miss more trophies. All right, we'll take a look at what we got. Let's go ahead and deploy this mountain first, and we'll go ahead and immediately make the mountain peak. That gives us the goblin camp. We'll go ahead and put a road lantern next to it, and around that corner to make sure we don't have to fight as many creatures. We got some level three boots. Gives us 2% more evasion and 12% attack speed. Let's equip that. Some armor that gives us hit points and magic damage, hit points and counter, hit points, evasion bonus, and crit damage chance. I really like this. Let's go for that armor. For weaponry, we got nothing better than what we already had. So we'll go around the loop again with what we got. And unfortunately, we're no longer one-hit killing the monsters. The slimes are have a little more life now that we're on loop three. 
We got a village. We should deploy that village. So, something neat about villages. We've seen that bandits spawn and go into villages, right? What do goblins do if we put the village near the goblin camp? Let's find out when the new day dawns. Interesting. It didn't spawn a goblin. The only place the goblins could have gone to was the village, and the village will fend off the goblins, preventing them from spawning there. I've seen quite a few people use oblivions on the goblin camps, but you can use a village, assuming that the goblin camp only has one exit from it, to, to do the same thing and to give you a quest early on. Goblins are always nightmarish to fight with any of the any of the uh, the classes that you are uh, are using. They do good damage. They're quick. They enrage on you. I'm always glad when I can get rid of goblins. We have two cemeteries. Okay, so let's. Hmm, what, what do I, how do I do this this time? Let's have a nice big cemetery loop here. Alright, not bad. We've been in the loop. Now, this is interesting. Note that we are slightly damaged, so we're not being as efficient at this as we could be. Or rather, we're not one-hit killing everything anymore. And as such, we're beginning to take damage. This is a warning that uh, we need to look at this build for a little bit. So first off, uh, we got a new weapon down here. A Quatar, and this increases the critical damage that we do. It also does more damage than either of our current weapons, because it's level 4. Let's... Put this over our level 2 axe. This axe is slightly better than our current level 3 axe, so that at least will be considered. We can get more attack speed, but I lose damage with these two. We can pick up 16% extra crit chance, though, with this Quatar, if I'm willing to lose damage. I think let's give that a try. I'll still hold on to these boots. I like the 12% extra attack speed. Okay, let's try going around again. A spider cocoon. Okay, so let's put you... We're probably not fighting the boss! Probably not, so I'm gonna spawn the spider cocoon somewhere around over here. Uh, let's put you here. I have found that when it comes to fighting enemies with the rogue, I prefer... And this is just me. I prefer fighting... <laughs> less enemies. I don't want to fight lots of enemies. I want to fight only a few. Uh, enemies, every time we're getting hit, we're not killing, like... Attack speed could be really handy. Attack all could be really handy for the rogue as well. To help you deal with clusters of, of enemies. But right now, with the cards we have available in our deck and the ones we brought with us, this will be tough because we're going to fight groups of spiders, groups of goblins, multiple rat, uh, rat hounds and so on. Uh, it's not going to be that much of a fun time for us. I think we'll... I think we might be able to reach the boss. Now, note that we have gotten... Trophies from the enemies this entire time. But when you complete the quest reward, you will get boots for that. So this gives us 6% extra evasion and another 19% chance to crit. I will lose the attack speed. But I'll do it with a 63% chance to crit for 163% damage. That's very nice. We crit. We crit again. Didn't crit that time. Nice. Quest completed. Give ourselves more max hit points. And it looks like we might be lucky enough. Oh, there's another thing, by the way, I should point out. Maybe you guys haven't noticed. I think... I didn't notice this earlier as well, but I think this is the case. Note that our mountains, when we were with the warrior, gave us five hit points for each adjacent rock or mountain. But for the rogue, it's giving us four hit points. I... I think what these give you are different for, at least the mountains, for the hero that you're bringing with you. Unless these are... 
somehow based around the loop level. We'll check again when we reach back to the camp, uh, the cozy camp. Nice, good work. Oh, we're getting one of those flesh golems. Now, where I put this treasury means I can't put a mountain there to make it spawn, but thankfully that's adjacent to the road so we can spawn a spider web instead. And I think we'll be keeping our current boots rather than those. We get more meadows though. Let's put those down near the crystal. Another mountain. Hmm. I think I'll put another crystal here when I get one. Okay, so we gain some better armor, and I think we have to wear this. We gain so many more max hit points, and we gain 615 attack speed, but we lose 8 evasion, and we lose the crit damage chance. It doesn't matter. I think I need it. Next, uh, this axe won't be equipped. This one, I think, should be, and it should go over our lower level Quitar, I think. Because I don't want to lose a 16% extra chance for that damage. Let's do this. And we got healed to full. So that last round worked out better for us than the previous round. I, I don't want to lose 19% critic damage chance on this those boots. Two harpies together here. We're getting, we're getting torn up. Another spider egg, another meadow. Let's put this spider egg here, which should make it affected by the lantern. And our first, we're, we're fighting skeletons, so this gives us a chance to see how well we do against these. Three hits, one of which was a crit. Okay, hold on. So we lose max hit points here, 100 of them. We lose attack speed, 4%, but we re-pick up 7% crit damage chance. I'm willing to do that trade. This is taking us too long. To kill them. We're going to have to replace this weapon when we get back to camp. Assuming that we're strong enough to go around again. Which we might not be. Our first level. Smokescreen. After losing 20% of his max hit points in battle, the hero will evade all attacks for 2 seconds. Blissful Ignorance. Deals you a full hand of Oblivion cards. From now on, using Oblivion cards heals the hero by 10% of his max hit points. Lethal Weakness. Every 10% of lost hit points gives you a 5% a 0.5% chance to instantly deal a thousand damage. Let's grab smoke screen. And we just gained it. Right, let's put down another meadow. So we are not getting as many meadows as I would have liked to have seen. <laughs> 35 points per day at loop 5? That's not so good. I think we're going to end up drinking all our potions and we might not actually survive this loop. Because of the flesh golem that's waiting for us up ahead. We have an oblivion. We're going to wait a little bit, but I may end up using it here to get rid of that flesh golem. That was one of our three potions that you just heard being drank. Okay, let's put down another village, which should heal us. Goblin camp. Another grove. Might as well put it right in front of us because we're not sticking around. I don't think we're finishing. We might not even finish this loop, everyone. We might die with what's coming up ahead. So, let's fight the golem. This may kill us, but we're going to give it a try. Ooh, 63 damage, and we immediately drink a potion to counteract that. Now, I want to point out something that just occurred. We just killed the flesh golem. 
What treasures did we get from it? None. We got a single token. Just like we get from everything else. If I'm playing the rogue, I do not want to have these in the deck. The blood grows aren't going to be so helpful for me. Those golems do a ton of damage, and I never want to see one of them. So, uh, that's one of the reasons why I said I don't like this uh, this deck, but we're going to do the same, but we're going to try the loops again. I don't think we're going to survive these rat hounds, so I'm going to oblivion them to get rid of them. That was our last potion. We're going to oblivion these creatures as well to get rid of them. We're going to put a grove in front so we can get another stick. And we will not survive another round of this, I think. Oh, oh hold on. Maybe we can. So, we just got a much better weapon than the other Quatar we're using. We'll equip that. There is a 17% evasion bonus Dirk here. We could drop down in our damage a little bit from our axe to gain more evasion. That brings us up to 23%, so we have a decent chance to evade now. We lose attack speed, we gain a tiny bit of hit points, we gain crit damage chance. I just, I just don't see this working out for us, everyone. I really don't. But I guess we can try one more loop. Let's equip our boots here. We're going to go down to only a 20% chance to crit. But we gain even more evasion now. Oh, 17% chance only to crit. Uh, we could equip this armor. We gain a few more hit points, but we lose our attack speed. I think I'd rather have the attack speed. Let's try one more loop. But if it looks really bad... We will flee. Yeah, we're only healing two damage, and enemy's hitting us for 19. Another village. You know what? We, we kind of need this in the way. Uh, let's hold on to it at the moment. And see how well we do here. Actually, yeah, let's see what well we do here. We'll probably throw it in front of this goblin camp. from the spiders. Yeah, I should probably have not stuck this out. I'm going to be, be uh, going into planning mode at the end of each of these battles because while I think I can handle each of them, we might... N I don't... We're not going to make it through the entirety of this circuit. I think we might be able to kill both of these guys. It's gonna be close. Yeah, the, ro uh, the bandits are very evady. Okay, we're gonna toss this in front of the goblins. That's our last health potion, everyone. We're not gonna win. Uh, we're not gonna be able to defeat. Okay, actually, we can probably defeat those spiders in the slime. There's no way we're going to be able to defeat this group over here. So, uh, I suppose in this instance, there's then no reason for us to continue. We won't get anything that's worth it from this stack of enemies. Yeah, we won't. Uh, we're not going to earn any, any treasure. Actually, I guess they could arguably give us cards which will give us a little more resources. I guess I'm sticking out for try one more battle. I, I don't know if I can handle three skeletons. We're out of potions.
We have that one evasion level up, Tim. You will survive this, but probably not another battle. We just took 100 damage, and our smoke screen already activated. Okay, we've only got 200 hit points now left, just about. Let's deploy the rock. And we're leaving. So, because we're leaving and we're not back at the camp, we're going to leave behind 40% of the loot that we have. Now, we have the option of spending a one of these skulls in order to keep it all. They're not actually called skulls, they're called something else altogether. They just happen to look like a skull. But in any case, um, we could spend it. You only get skulls from defeating the bosses, however. And I don't think one skull is worth it to keep all this piddling amount of treasure. Let's instead just retreat. And we'll leave that behind. Okay, did we earn enough scraps to make another building? We did not. Okay, so we gotta go out again. So let's do one more mission, everyone. So, this time around, let's try to plan this a bit better for our rogue. So, I think we'll still want... Oh, oh! By the way, I should probably explain what the circles mean, shouldn't I? Filled circles mean this... This card must be deploy must be deployed on the road. Half circles means it must be deployed adjacent to the road. No circles means it must be deployed away from the road. Some cards may have other uh, placing requirements like treasuries which cannot be built next to anything. The oblivion has three circles because it can be deployed on against things on the road, on the side of the road or off the road. So let's take the Oblivion, and we'll take the Beacon. I'm not going to take the Treasuries, though. Not with the Rogue if I'm taking him out. We'll take the Rock. And actually, the Treasury would be useful, because it gives us actual treasure. So we will take it. Um, I think we will take the Cemetery. We'll grab the Spider Cocoon. A rogue, a, a road Lantern, a Rogue Lantern, to keep the amount of creatures we'll have to fight down to, to a minimum. We'll grab the crystals since we're bringing the meadows. Uh, the village is an interesting one to take with the rogue, but it does give us a chance to get healed, so we'll take it. I would prefer having another card in the deck to go along with the village when I use the rogue, but we don't have it, so we'll just have to choose this. I am a little nervous about the vampire mansion, but we'll take it. And... Do we want the battlefield? We haven't seen the rogue in the battlefield. I guess we'll take it. But you normally would not want to take the battlefield with you, for reasons you'll see soon. But there is some sort of nice, a nice combo you can use the battlefield with the vampire mansion in the case of the rogue, which we've seen kind of before, so let's grab it. And once again, we'll try the first boss. I'm a little happier with this deck, but this deck is not still... Still not what I would want to take with the rogue if I had the choice. This all, The game's also a little bit more difficult for us because we don't have all the cards unlocked yet. And we won't have all the cards unlocked for some significant amount of time. Generally by... Generally. Listen to me as if I played this game for thousands of hours or so. I... It seems to me that you will have most of what you want by the third boss. By the time you are reliably killing the second boss and are in the third act, I think at that point, you're probably able to handle... I'm oh, sorry, you'll have most of what you what you want for your deck. Uh, let's not deploy that yet. Okay... We'll put sweaters around here. We'll put a crystal next to those meadows to help them out. Not much loot, this loop. Well, actually, Tim, no, remember, you're playing the rogue. You thought, you thought I thought I was playing the warrior for a few seconds. So uh, we won't get any, any treasure, any equipment from these creatures. Hey, perfect, the battlefield. Let's put that here. All right, we got a level two suit of armor. 
better hit points and more crit damage. We gain some level 3 boots for 9% evasion. A level 3 polearm that gives us 3 defense and better damage. And I guess we'll use this level 2 sword. We can definitely go around again. Alright, well, let's get that treasure from the treasure chest. The treasure chest doesn't give you any treasure when you kill it with the rogue. Not only does it not give you any treasure, like, a at all. Like, there's no token either from it. There's no treasure or token. But you do get four stable branches from it, at least here on this difficulty. Vampire Mansion. Let's put that here. The Vampire Mansion, combined with the Treasure Chest, though, will let you kill the Vampire. And then you kill the, the Treasure Chest for nothing. This time around as well, we saw how much damage Harpies do to us. I'm going to not spawn the Mountain Peak with our Rogue. Or I'm going to try not to, assuming I can remember not to do so. Okay, good. We have a village to deal with the goblin camp, depending on where the goblin camp spawns. Let's put some spiders here. I guess we'll put the meadow down as well. Another road lantern. I do like my road lanterns surrounding corners, but it would probably be better for us to hold on to that. I might want to reduce the amount of spiders I spawn around this area. If I deploy it there, I could get a second spider there and only have two spiders to fight in these two areas. Get a rock, another meadow, uh, let's put you, put you there. Okay. This is the only weapon I think I'll be you uh, equipping. The only piece of loot, actually, we got this from this loop. Let's go ahead and, well, that's worth equipping. Let's put this on instead of our sword and keep going again. I'm not deploying the village yet, because I want to see where the goblins get deployed. And that time the chest spawned down here, so we weren't even able to get a vampire fight out of that, unfortunately, for us. More crystals. Oh, that's a tough spot for me. Okay, so we can block the goblins by putting this, like, here or here. Let's put it there. The goblins will all now spawn from out of the south side of the camp, so let's put another lantern in this spot to reduce the amount of them we'll have to fight. If we get an oblivion, we can totally get rid of that camp. A treasury... Spawn it in the mountains, where all the treasuries belong. Tim, you do not want to spawn the harpies. Just a jagged line of broken mountains in that area, but no actual mountain peak. It's, it's a low mountain range. I suppose, did, did I put beacons in this deck? I can't remember now. And there's no way, unfortunately, for me to, to double check it. I hope I did. Beacons are really useful when we're playing the, uh, the road. They let us travel faster, which means we can pass by the day without fighting as many enemies, because we're moving faster. And getting more attack speed is very handy with the road. We did put beacons, okay. So let's go ahead and see where I want this.
A bit tricky putting it here, because I give the goblins attack speed. But this does affect the most road tiles, so I will do that. We gained a level... Let's look. We gained no higher level boots. So we're still using level 3 boots. So the question is, do I drop my evasion for something else? Let's drop 2 evasion for some magic damage. Oh, uh, let's not do that. Let's not do that. Okay. I think I want my damage for all at this moment. But we'll swap out our polearm for the level 5 axe. And we'll drop our current armor for this one to give us more max hit points. Oh, uh, these boots actually give us more evasion. It's 12% more evasion. Sorry, 3% uh, more evasion and give us some counter. So we'll wear those. Alright, let's go around again. Thankfully, the damage to all did not reveal this to be a mimic. So we didn't have to worry about fighting one of those. Get another battlefield. So we've seen battlefields are not very useful for us. So wherever we deploy this, we're going to want a vampire mansion near it. Across the road from it or something of the sort. Um, let's put you here. This itself does will do nothing, by the way, other than add a small chance for whoever fights here to give it a, to give us a ghost. But there's a reason why I want it deployed here, which you'll see when I get a chance to deploy another city. And go around again, kill us some slimes. Another road lantern and another spike cocoon. So I said I wanted one of these here, but I think it might be better for me to deploy this up in this area at the moment. I really don't want to have to deal with three goblins. And we'll put a spark cocoon there as well. We have a boss fighter here. Oof. Gonna be a little painful for us. We got another town. Okay. So, town placement. So, we could put this right here to get rid of those annoying goblins. It kind of wastes the road lantern, though, if I'm being honest. I think we'll deploy this village down here instead. Now, I'm going to put it in a very specific spot here. And it's not because I don't want the spider cocoon, but because when I do this, note that that was our second village but we didn't get a bandit camp. The bandit camp can't. Sp the bandit camp must spawn when we place down the second village. But there's no place for it to spawn. It must be placed near a village. And in this case, the two spots near this village are occupied already. So are the two spots near the road on this by this village. So there's no place for them to spawn. So they don't. And now we don't have to worry about them again until we have to place our fourth village down. In fact, we could put our third village here and our fourth village here, and still not have to worry about any of the bandits. And we get the vampire mansion. We'll put it here. Which means if we do find a, a slime at this location, the vampire mansion will be added to it. Now there are some other tile interactions which I'm not going to do for this run, but will do in the next video. One of them involves a vampire mansion. We could do it now. Maybe I'll do it before the end of this video, but I'm not sure. Uh... Plus we hit points after a kill. I think this is healing as opposed to max hit points. Pickpocket could be useful, but well, why not? Let's give it a try. Nothing is sacred. Plus three hit points after a kill. I don't know what that means. I think that means we heal three hit points. Let's see. Yup, that did not increase our max hit points at all. So that is not a very good upgrade. Or it could be good if we do so much damage and attacking so quickly that we can make good use of it. Or maybe fighting a single opponent would be useful if our evasion is high enough that we don't have to worry about them reliably hitting us or not. But later on, enemies are doing hundreds of damage. 
And three hit points is absolutely nothing. Compared to the damage that you will be being dealt by those uh, by those enemies. If that was hit points, if that was maybe like two hit points times loop, okay, that would be worth it. At least to help keep you alive. But it's not. It's not. Not all the upgrades, as you can see, that you can, that the game gives you are very useful, and some aren't useful at all, actually. It's another complaint I have with the game. It probably needs a little more time in the oven to come up with, uh, to fix some of the balance issues that are in it. Nice, we got two Oblivions. So we could use that to get rid of these of this goblin camp, but that two goblins was, wasn't so tough. I think we'll be okay there. Let's think. So we got another beacon. We should absolutely deploy that. Let's put another vampire mansion over here. That way we guarantee ourselves a vampire by the chest when one gets ejected by that battlefield. Okay. So we have some more level... For armor. I like my attack speed. We lose the damage to all if I equip this, but I think our level 3 base is beginning to fall by the wayside damage-wise. Let's equip the spear. We'll take a little bit of counter. And this is better than our other axe, so we might as well equip that as well. How about our boots? I guess we'll go with more counter. And we'll lose 4% evasion. I don't like that. But it can't be helped. We don't really have much of a choice. Let's do it. Oh, a ghost! Kill it! <laughs> Woo! Okay. Uh, more mountains? Deploy those here. We'll link the two mountain ranges together, and then we'll put a bunch of meadows around. I kind of want more crystals so I can get even more value from my meadows from them, but they're just not giving a, us those today. A quest spider up there. Now we were, what loop were we on when we killed the Lich? Level 7? Loop 7? So it's the Lich started at level 8, probably. And I don't feel confident if we were to have to fight the Lich right now whatsoever. This feels like we're way underpowered. I would want significantly more evasion before fighting it off. Uh, we did get another village, so we could put that in front of the goblins. But that gives us even less creatures to fight. Let's not do that at the moment. Let's hold on to it at this at this at this time. Our first graveyard! Wow, we've been going around for a while without any of them. <coughs> I gotta be careful why I put this, because. I put it near a vampire mansion, and we're gonna get vampires with it. I'm gonna start spawning skeletons. I don't know if I want to fight skeletons and vampires at the same time. Let's put you here. We've got a cemetery, we've got an old battlefield, we've got two vampire mansions. That feels somehow thematic. Let's fight these two goblins. Oh my god, these are terrible! Even two goblins are terrible! <laughs> Maybe I do want that village between the, the goblin and that lantern. Uh, let's walk through this first. Get another quest. Okay. Do I show you this? If you do this, Tim, you're throwing the towel for the loop. Let's do it. Alright, everyone, so let's show you a special interaction with the Vampire Mansion. 
We learn from the vampires that they lost their flock a long time ago and they're starving to death. Let's give them a village. In this way, they'll be content and they'll have maybe some people that they can feed off of to satisfy their hunger. But what actually happens is you get a ransacked village. The farmers couldn't fight off a hungry vampire. They could still fight you off, though. Spawns up to four ghouls once per loop. Transforms into something useful after three loops. Now we have to fight a bunch of ghouls all at once. And we're immediately drinking potions because ghouls are tough for the rogue to deal with. And we got a ghost as well. Uh-oh. I think this is it for us. I, th I think we're dying right here. The ghost keeps evading. Woo! We just barely won. We have 163 hit points left. Okay. I think we can kill this slime. And then make it to the camp. And is there any way for me to get everything that's inside this? I, there is not. Actually, there is. So we could Oblivion the Vampire Mansion. Take this Vampire Mansion. But it doesn't get rid of the ransacked village. That still stays. We might not have to fight the vampire when we go around again. But we will have to fight those four ghouls. What do you guys think? think we can handle another loop? I think we might be able to handle one more. But that village was a nasty... Th uh, with the vampire, that's going to be really difficult for us. Let's see. So, we don't really have any better weapons. A bunch of counter. I guess we could do that. Give ourselves a bunch of counter. 60% chance to counter. And we in... Oh, we have 20% increased counter because of our boots as well. I don't know. This doesn't feel good. I don't have a good feeling about this. I guess worst comes to worst, we can just flee again. We did pick up two new potions upon reaching the campfire. Let's think. So... I... Th Sure, let's deploy a village here and get rid of the goblins. Note that we did not get another bandit camp. Interesting. I thought it would have actually spawned one. I'm being honest here, next to a ransacked village, but it didn't it did not do so. Interesting. I guess the ransacked village doesn't count as a village. And so the game didn't spawn it here. Or the bandit camp spawned, tried to spawn in the village randomly and could not do so. We have another crystal. Let's put you over here. I guess we should spawn the village in order to give us... More wood. A village. I'm sorry, the battlefield to give us more wood. And then we have more vampires to fight, Tim. We're we're fleeing again, everyone. We're gonna we're not gonna have a choice. The vampire is just too tough for us, combined with the slime. Yeah, we're taking hundreds of damage. And plus we hit points after killing a thing. This upgrade is useless. <laughs> One of the worst upgrades. Uh, let's put this here. I think we'll get rid of that slime so we can get healed a tiny bit from that village. Now I shouldn't complain. I shouldn't be complaining too much. After all, our evasion is only eight percent, so we're gonna get smacked in the face pretty often by all the enemies we're, we're encountering. We lose max hit points. We gain 10% evasion. I think we need to take that. Our counter is really helping us here as well at the moment. Uh, so the real question is going to be, can I take on 
all these ghouls. One of the which is a boss ghoul. I think the answer to that is a no. We're getting rid of it. Okay, we actually survived that trip around very nicely, actually. And we've regained up our, to our potions, and we get a bunch of new loot, and we're almost at max life. The problem, though, is that we didn't get a whole lot of loot. In fact, we're now on loop 7. I don't see any loot, loot uh, level 7 equipment here. I think we kind of have to drop down on our counter a bit. Because I need evasion, or I feel like I need the evasion. Alternatively, we throw in the towel, which is what I think I want to do. Yeah, let's toss in the towel. I think this is this is a good spot to stop. We're not fighting very many enemies, so every time we go around the loop, we're bringing back not a whole lot of trophies. I don't think I like this deck uh, as much as what it could be if I swapped out, swapped out a few cards and dropped a few things. So we'll go ahead and turn the towel here and get back, get ourselves back to camp. Now, we have enough resources, we can make the cemetery, or the farm. I think we'll go ahead and make a farm. All empty tiles around the farm are transformed into gardens. After an expedition, it gives you one ration for every completed loop, but not more than there are garden tiles around the farm. You can build something over the garden. Unlocks the ability to craft food, if the supply depot is built. Unlocks the wheat fields card. And we're going to go ahead. Oh, actually, no, we're not building it yet because we still have these. I forgot all about this. We still have survivor tents here. They will block a garden from being built if I built the farm here. So let's not do that. Um, I guess we'll just hold on to our stuff then. And we'll aim to, to build the supply depot. Once we have the supply depot built, we'll be able to create mud huts. And we have built two mud huts. The survivor tents will be gone. The people will move into those homes instead. Alright, so we'll just stop here. Thank you all for watching. So we did three loops. We beat the boss with the warrior, and we tried out the rogue, but found out that the rogue, he's tough to use, at least early on. I myself prefer using the rogue starting in the second act. Uh, enemies are tougher in the second act, but I will generally have more cards unlocked by then. I definitely wouldn't mind having the uh, field card unlocked to help us out with the rogue. And I would, I would want to take out a few other cards as well. But in any case, I'm babbling. Thank you guys for watching. And I will see you all in the next one. Take care, everyone.